everybody welcome back to your mr video game live super show brought to you by dead sun entertainment everyone clap your hands say yeah uh, i apologize for the first 10 seconds that we were streaming i had forgotten that we were using last week's sound setup so uh you only got most of the song rather than all of the song uh i would replay it over again but fuck that noise we're getting started uh, I'm Slacker Kite. Uh, I guess I'm the editor here at Dead Sun. Hey, Kelvin, how's it going? Uh, I push buttons, make things go, and uh, yeah, all of that good stuff. I have with me today, as always, uh, our good friend behind the news. It's Brian, aka Wonder Boy. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> you gotta tell me what it's like when snow goes away because i've kind of forgotten at this point and just decided that the world is this fine powdery white stuff <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that isn't a trait we completely share in common at all, so... <laughs> Oh, chat cannot hear you. That's interesting. Um, that's weird to me. Say, let's try this. Okay, say hi. Can you hear me now, Kelv? Okay, that's fascinating, because apparently the audio I was playing for the music went to my speakers, but you're going to my headphones. Oh. I am very confused with you, Windows. Okay, cool. Well, <laughs> glad to know that all of my jokes about yeah, my buddy. inability to recognize things around me uh, did, when, did not get heard by anybody uh, in the chat. I am totally cognizant of everything that happens around me at all times. I am not absent-minded at all, and the snow is gone. Me either. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, just the uh, beginning of Show Music Cube, I had to change the audio to pick that up. And because I didn't see that going, but then when we started the stream, that's why we didn't hear Brian for the first minute of him talking. Because you know, Hooray. Windows is weird. <laughs> also, amazingly joining us alive and on time, it's Lindsay K. Lady Marilyn. Woo! I survived. Holy Hooray. shit! <laughs> um. And as of next week, my schedule changes, so I finish an hour earlier, which means I shouldn't be missing any more shows. You could even eat some food between uh, your job and the stream. 
Yeah. Or yeah. like, you know, start a new loaf of bread. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, how you doing today? You feeling all right out there? I mean, the snow needs to stop. <laughs> fair. Because yeah. it, it ain't going away. It keeps falling. There is there is just a lot of it outside my window, and um, I just choose to stay inside and never leave my front door, so. I mean, on the upside, it was like three degrees today. Ooh. So some of it did melt. Above freezing. What an achievement. Yeah. <laughs> right? Instead of our minus 15 that we've been dealing with. So that's five degrees Fahrenheit for all y'all in the U.S. Um, and I only know this because I had somebody ask today during a call. Nice. Nice. Um, But no, like work sucked. I got gaslit by some of my senior advisors today oh, so cool. i pretty much sat and uh started questioning my knowledge as to what i actually know about my job which kind of sucked mm. but i got over it and and i survived and i've only got one day left this week i got two blissful days to myself so much crocheting <laughs> Although I'm almost out of yarn. <laughs> Fair enough. Ah, so should we talk about video games? I guess we should. That's like what the show is about or something other than talking about how to uh, convert centigrade to Fahrenheit and all of that happy oh, stuff. Before we talk about video games, can I talk about something else? Yeah. Just real quick. So I know this is normally where we talk about the stuff that we played. And I do have a video game that I did play a lot this week, but it's Rocket League, and that's not really <laughs> anything new for me. Um, although this time I am playing it on PlayStation 4 for the first time, and uh, cool. I must say I, I enjoy it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's still Rocket League. It's still good. But um, I actually played another board game because since the power went out last week, <laughs> my partner and I got on a board game kick. And I bought a board game for them for Valentine's Day, and we weren't able to pick it up until much after valentine's day so uh i played uh, a really fun deck building game called uh cowboy bebop space serenade i don't know if either of y'all have heard about that one mm -mm. i know cowboy bebop and i mm -hmm. like deck builders so this well, sounds then, like a good thing let me tell you you will like this one it's fun it's basically like you and the whole bebop crew going around capturing bounty hunters and it's competitive so like you're trying to get renown from capturing bounty hunters and then and then vicious shows up and you have to like try and capture vicious it's fun it's quick uh one to four players i really enjoyed playing it and um it was just something that we ended up playing like two games in a night uh last night and uh, it was just really really fun so that's my two cents because I can't talk more about Rocket League because Rocket League is just Rocket League is fun. Nice. So. I also played a new game what? this week. Great. I know, and it's one from this year. Holy shit! You well, I mean, at that least relatively close to this year. And crocheting. Yeah, yeah. Um, played it last night on stream because my guilty pleasure is watching arcade YouTubers. Mm. So folk that go to the arcade and try to win all of the jackpots and stuff like that. And one of them was actually in light of the health crisis and not being able to go to the arcade because they're based out of Pennsylvania. Um, they were playing this game on their channel and I was super intrigued. It's called The Coin Game. Mm -hmm. And pretty much you, if you play survival, it's you get to the whole point is, is of going to arcades to win prizes because you have limited money and mm -hmm. then you pawn those prizes to get the monies to make the <laughs> thanks coop and hi know me uh so you pawn the prizes to get the money so you can have food and you have like curfew and stuff that you have to deal with. But last night we played the birthday version of the game where it's kind of just a free for all. You have mm -hmm. unlimited money. You have no curfew to deal with. You don't have to worry about food. You just go around to different arcades and play a whole bunch of games. Now, these games are all based off, off of actual arcade games, Beautiful. Um, which is 
stupid amounts of fun. And it's it's overall cute. It's in early access on Steam right now. It's like 10 bucks Canadian, so like 5 bucks for you guys. Um, but apparently it's one of those rare passion project games where it was actually entirely made by one person. Oh, and the dude's been working on it for years. I remember like three years ago when uh, Brutal News recorded it, like the only arcade setup that was there was the one that you start out at. You know, the, the not Chuck E. Cheese place where you can watch the uh, live performance of the band and it's very awkward and weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. Though, like, seeing all of that, it, when I watch it, it makes me think, like, there is so much room for, like, a unsettling underbelly to take place in this game that doesn't. And I think FNAF has just primed the pump for me so hard at this point. I just see going out to the arcade and, uh, you know, there's, you have to go out and do jobs in order to afford your arcade money and food and stuff. And my brain just goes like, uh, yes, there's places for evil here. And, uh, this game doesn't <laughs> seem to be evil. Yeah. And I mean, with the fact that like the entire, uh, world seems to be populated by these like oblong egg shaped robot people. Yeah, they remind I'm me a lot of... of like a um, something from Portal, basically, to me at least. To me, like I'm either getting like Homestar Runner or Weeble and Bob throwbacks. Well, you've got Nomi's attention now, so. <laughs> um, they are cute robo babies, and the fact that you can grab a hold of both of them and fling them across the room is hilarious. <laughs> Fair. But 1010 recommend yeah. wholeheartedly, if only for the birthday scenario, because I mean, you get to tool around in a limo, and anytime you run low on pocket money, you step into a cash machine and they spray money at you and you have to collect money. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Literally every time I've ever caught like a YouTuber or streamer playing this, they always wander in beard stroking. Hmm, I wonder if this will be any good. How could a game about going to the arcade be any good? And then an hour and a get hour in, and they're giggling and running around like little children going, Oh my god, what does this game do? Holy shit, it's like the real thing! Well, I mean, you saw me. I was running mm. around going, Oh my god, this game is based off of this! And this game is this! And <laughs> I was amazed so. they had like a functioning boat ride in it which is one of like my favorite things ever in the whole wide world i i still don't know how you ride those like they they just make me feel so gross when i try fantastic i don't know how you can't be filled with love on one of those boats that go 90 degree ramp back and forth it's great uh, uh, <laughs> yeah fair enough um, I did get a little gaming time in myself this week, I know, surprise. Um, I played the actual Bowser's Fury, just the main campaign. I haven't, you know, gone through and collected the other 40 whatchamajigs that uh, float around. It's interesting, because you're taking all of the assets from 3D World. This is just assets they already had and build an open world environment. Um, there's no new power-ups here. There's uh, no new enemies here, at least as far as I can tell. If I'm missing anything, okay, fine. But they're taking things that already exist, and Mario 3D World by itself is more like Sweeto 3D. It is a 3D play that you're going in, but it's mostly, you know, left and right, up and down. Uh, with some room uh, forward and backwards to move about. It's, uh, think of, like, uh, how you play a beat-em-up, that, you know, there is forward and backwards, but the game basically moves left to right. Same concept. This is, like, an open-world take. Like, somebody took Mario Odyssey and, like, dialed it down to 8 instead of at 10 at all times. Because you're still collecting items and you're completing challenges and redoing certain areas to find uh, different shiny things. And uh, I would say I would rather go back and play Odyssey. 
But as a brand new, fresh experience, this is definitely worth the time. Um, if you've already played 3D World itself, I don't think this alone justifies a $60 purchase. But it is neat, especially if you are somebody who has that full background in 3D World, because they've taken the same engine and the same assets and somehow laid those out in such a way that this is all new and fascinating. There is, of course, also the kaiju battles that uh, take up a good solid part of it and interacting with giant kaiju bowser is uh is not as frightening as you would think so at first until they start like ramping it up and bowser kaijus more and more often but still mm. it's fun um and so good oh sorry continue i'll ask my question at the end I was just going to say, I feel like it's definitely was worth the asking price for me as somebody who's never played uh, 3D World itself. Um, I have, you know, a couple of roommates here who also like Mario games. So sometimes I sit down and play Mario with them. So does the like open world kind of or not necessarily full open world, but more open world aspect of the Bowser's Fury stuff, how does that... Um... How does that land with you? It's an interesting gimmick. Go mm -hmm. into lurk mode. Thank you for your, uh, you know, giving us your uh, eyeballs for at least a while, Nomi. Uh, it's an interesting gimmick. I can see how the assets they have are definitely better fit for the main 3D world game. Um, but it is an interesting, like project here to see them taking that and completely tweaking it so that it is something unique but similar somehow at the same time it has that same feel uh of the main game meanwhile doing things that the main game itself couldn't actually do because of its uh, limitations and as well you feel a little bit more open to just fuck around and explore in this uh in this game which is something mm. you do not really like there is a certain amount of hey what does uh this object do and you know that sort of fuckery with uh 3d world but not in that like hey i'm gonna go sail in this way and see what happens and you find something new hmm. main reason why i ask is because like i've seen some critics out there saying that like this this sort of style that they put into Bowser's Fury is kind of what uh, they want to see future Mario games adapt to, you know, like put like not necessarily going, having different worlds and different levels to travel between, but having that more, that, that connectivity between the different uh, biomes per se, because like you do get some of that exploration aspect from a game like Super Mario Odyssey, mm -hmm. you know, the levels are big, and there's a lot of stuff to find, a lot of extra moons and stuff to find there. Mm. Um, so I'm just curious, like, for you, would would you see this as a, a formula that would work for a, a future Mario game? To be honest, uh, I would rather see something in the uh, Odyssey or Galaxy lineage myself. Mm. Uh, both of those, you know, while they are explorative in a form and fashion um in some of the worlds where you can actually go out of your way to go find other side things or other things to do i think mario works best when he is a little bit constrained right because you get that constant dopamine um and zelda works great as an open world game uh i don't think even before breath of the wild this was a new idea because in a lot of zelda games Half of the fun was just wandering off in a different direction, and what can I blow up over here? Meanwhile, Mario is one of those games where you need to be fed with new ideas every minute or so, or it gets a little stagnant just running and jumping at things. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that, like, Bowser's Fury is anyway boring or not worth the time or effort um I, I just don't see unless they really expand on this formula and give us new things to interact with i don't see how this formula would really play into a full standalone mario game 
Okay. But it, it's Sounds. it's a fun thought thing. Uh, Mary, are you saying something? Oh, I was just saying that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's cool, though. Um, in Like I said, if you haven't played uh, 3D Mario, uh, I swear to God, Slow Beef has ruined my ability to say Mario for the rest of my life. But if you haven't played that 3D game, um, this is really entirely worth it as a pack together. Um, you can two-player for uh, Bowser's Fury as well. Which is kind of neat. You can have somebody play as Bowser Jr., which I don't think is something that's ever been done before. So you have him fly around in his clown car and just fucking around with enemies in the scenery and shit. So that's cool. <sighs> Speaking of Nintendo, shall we just drop into the news then? Let's sure. shift us into actual go, go, go mode. Uh, of course, last week, the first uh, Nintendo Direct to take place since 2019 took place. Um, you know, with all of the COVID shit going on, um, it's been impossible for them to really do anything more than little mini directs for different things coming along as it goes, because it's hard to really plan uh, during COVID. But it seems like things are starting to get back together. Uh, and I think Enron Khan wrote maybe the best summary of a direct that I've ever seen. You know, Imran's legit. Absolutely. Um, now, I know the beginning of it threw off a lot of people. Um, there, was some... <laughs> <laughs> there was some Xenoblade stuff, and it was like, oh, is it another game in the Xeno? No, it's, it's Smash Brothers. Uh, I they, fucking love this. They they added uh, Big Titty Sword Lady Pyrrha and Mithra into the Smash Brothers action. I've never played uh, the Xeno games before, so I don't have an opinion on these characters. I'm not mad. Like, I think... Like, I see a lot of people shitting on uh, the Smash Brothers Season 2 roster, but, like, Sephiroth and Steve are both really interesting and unique additions um, I don't have a problem with adding uh, a sword character that can change between forms and do different things. As a note, um, our stream is just currently just showing up with our our wonderful purple bits. We've what? got nothing else on the screen. Oh, it's black now. What happened to you? Oh no! Well, uh, well, while you figure that yeah. out, real quick. There it is. Um, so. I thoroughly enjoyed this presentation because it was such a fucking like little dig at at, at some of the it's such a such a fun little like swerve in a way because like it very much introduced like a new Xenoblade game <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's just like oh I'm in Smash and like wait wait what I wanted to be in Smash like well fuck you I'm in Smash Pyra and Mithra work very well for the game. I will say, um, I, I understand the frustration with yet another sword character being yeah. added because, like, gee, Jesus Christ, how many different sword characters does Ultimate have at this point? But at the same time, like, yeah, like, there's a lot of flexibility being able to switch between uh, Pyra and Mithra um, there. Plus, it seems like you're going to get some assists. Um, from some other Xenoblade characters coming in there, and of course a new stage uh, that is uh, patterned after Xenoblade. Um, so, yeah, it's fine. Like it's it's I I thought that they did it fairly well, honestly. So, like I I had no problems with it. Yeah, it it was fine to me. Like, and I do love how hard they went on this. It was like three minutes, uh, worth of trailer before uh they actually got to Pira. So it really did feel like, ah, it has to be a new game, because usually these, like, Smash cinematics are 30 seconds. And no, no, it just it just went with this whole, where has my friend been all of this time? We traveled off far away and haven't found each other, and then... <laughs> Smash! <laughs> No, I what I really liked about this presentation was how all the different characters were talking about being in Smash. Like they're like self like they they have this like self-awareness of that they're in this thing. It's so weird, but so good, honestly. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, thank you. I didn't mean to cut you off, Lindsay. Sorry. Oh no, it's all good. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not huge on Smash to begin with. Mm. Uh, and the addition of you know yet another big sword character, it's just like, where's Master Chief? <laughs> Because, you know, the the folks behind Halo were talked to about this last October or the October prior. Mm -hmm. And they're like, somebody went, yo, when is Master Chief coming to Smash? And they, they're like, he's literally just waiting for his invite. <laughs> so bring the Master Chief to Smash and then we'll talk. I mean, we still but have please room. stop giving me more of the same on the fighter pass for a potential master chief so i mean that's not technically off the table i don't know what nintendo property master chief really interacts with but you know <laughs> why the fuck yeah, nintendo Kelly. property does fucking solid snake interact with solid snake had a gamecube release sir it uh twin snakes was definitely a gamecube game as well the okay, original oh, metal gear okay. was on the nes Okay, so we're talking. I thought you were talking like interacting with other characters in that, in that way. Like, oh. yes, I of course, like the Twin Snakes thing is there, but I was just thinking, like, Solid Snake never showed up in Zelda. Mm. <laughs> like, Solid Snake and Ice Climbers don't know each other. Oh, I mean, like, as far as uh, characters that have ever actually been on a Nintendo property in any uh, fashion or just had a game release on a Nintendo property in any way. Well, good. In that instance, then technically, Master Chief has already been uh, on a Nintendo sort of thing because Halo, Halo uh, Master Chief is in Fortnite, and you can play Fortnite on your Switch. That is a real stretch, though, because you're not playing as Master Chief; you're playing with a Master Chief skin. Eh, still there. Fair enough. I'm just being a dick. I love it. <laughs> I uh I do uh I I do enjoy the salt from the internet community. Where's our Gino and our Goku? We want them now. I don't I oh. no, we're good. Uh as well as Splatoon 3 was revealed. Uh not a whole lot really shown other than uh a character creator and hanging out in a desert followed by a city with a 2022 release date. Uh, but Splatoon has slowly become one of the most beloved newer Nintendo franchises. I know it's not new, but it's newer than Zelda and Mario and all of that good stuff. So seeing Splatoon 3 being announced, I think a lot of people were expecting that it would take another um iteration of Nintendo hardware before we would see that, but coming next year sometime. Yeah, I'm here for Splatoon 3. I I did get a kick out of the internet basically uh getting very excited over the amount of options for pants <laughs> in that character creator. There were so um, many pants. Yes, so yes, you get all your pants as well as a post-climate dystopia world that is inhabited <laughs> by squid people and, and fishies. Really, Nintendo's trying to pep you, prepare you because, like, most of us will see in the year 2050 when there is no actual climate left in uh, Earth anymore. So, you know, get ready today. We did not right. see a pantsless option, Feli, but um, if you're a good boy and girl. Um, I love this note. Uh, Anuma deadass came on screen to tell us that Breath of the Wild 2 info will be coming later this year. Just came right out and said, Hey everybody, I know you're all waiting for more Breath of the Wild 2 information. Uh, we don't have any right now. Um, but we'll, we'll have some. <laughs> I loved it. It's great. It was just one of those moments of... Uh, I'm a little disappointed. Uh, disappointed, but I can't be mad at you because at least you're being fucking honest. And it's COVID; everyone gets one, including the Zelda people. Yeah, I, I, I got distinct Professor Farnsworth vibes of good news, everybody. We have no news. 
Oh, no, they definitely had some news, but they knew that they had to get this out of the way and try and ease people into understanding that, you know, we have this other thing to talk about. Maybe don't like just please don't hate us because we don't have Breath of the Wild 2 news yet. But we totally have this other thing that is they're really trying hard to tangentially tie <laughs> to the development of Breath of the Wild for some reason. I never I did you know that Skyward Sword without Skyward Sword Breath of the Wild wouldn't be possible. Did you, did you know that? I yes, but I <laughs> am I have all three anthology books. I am that oh. asshole. Uh so <laughs> I'm aware of the development of Skyward Sword and how that led to Breath of the Wild and um it's dumb and just tangential. But also, I understand that if you're going to announce that you're bringing back um, a Switch, um, a Wii release that uh, hasn't really aged too terribly between what it's, uh, the Wii version and the HD version is going to look like, you have to prime the pump a little and tell everyone a little bit of news of what's going on. So, you know, kudos on that, I guess. Uh so, yeah, Skyward Sword is coming out to the Switch. Uh, one of the most questionable games uh, in the the Zelda universe. Uh, people have a real love or hate of it uh, because the uh, motion controls are so uh, tied into the game itself. And it's not, you know, the fact that you're doing a whole lot of waggle, but it kind of slows parts of it down, especially the flying bits, where you have to actually fucking do the flying motions. Um, it's like the only Zelda that has come out uh, since I hit adulthood that uh, I played, but only got into one dungeon. That gives you an idea. <laughs> <laughs> to my understanding, because I, I never played Skyward Sword, mm. um, and I... I am somewhat curious about it just because of the, the outlier status that it has um, in, in, in its control scheme and how it is like designed solely around this control scheme in a way. Um, but to my knowledge, one of the major gripes with that game is just how long and dull and drolling the tutorial is at the very beginning of the game. Oh like it's like God. hours until you actually get to do something. Um, it, it, uh, basically looked at Kingdom Hearts 2's intro and said, hold my beer. Because uh, <laughs> first you have to wake up as Link, and then you have to meet all the people at your school, uh, and then you have to do a little tutorial walking around puzzle, and then you have to say hi to everyone in the village, and then you have to get on your bird to learn how to do the flap flap dance. And then God. you can go explore. Okay. And by then, my will to live was very low, so... Yeah. Uh, I'm ready to give this another try. Uh, I want to at least give Skyward Sword a real go, because... It being the first game in the series, a whole lot of lore is dropped and explained in Skyward Sword. Um, but I, I haven't had the motivation to break out my Wii just to play this game that I gave up. So, well, um, a lot of people have complaining, been complaining about the $60 price cost. To, have uh, they announced the cost? It is $60. Oof. Uh, to which I say, have you met Nintendo? Uh, they were charging $20, uh, you know, 15 years ago for you to play Zelda, but in a GBA cartridge. Yo, they're charging $20 for Age of Calamity DLC that, it, like, literally is nothing. <laughs> so, like, it's Nintendo. Yeah. Well, like, at least Age of Calamity, it's not totally them. Also, I just realized...